Hello everyone, this is Mayron, and welcome back to my series. Now let me first explain, this video has been a bit delayed from being released, only because I had to move house to my brother's place, so that you may notice that some of the audio in this video is actually sounds a bit different from what I'm saying now. I'm in a much more echoey environment, well, you know, a room, I'm not in the forest, so sometimes I may go from talking like this to talking a bit better later on and the quality of the voice gets better, I don't know, I don't know how it sounds. However, for this episode I would have really liked to have just dived into creating the graphics. I cannot wait to do that sort of stuff and also the programming and showing you some really cool tricks. However, we have to discuss what add-ons we're going to be using and we touched a bit on that on episode 1, but it wasn't as much as it needs to be. So what I wanted to do today was to clarify all of the different add-on groups and discussing which ones I would personally recommend. However, unfortunately, I only got time to discuss about the action bar mods, and I didn't get time to do anything else, because as I dived into it, I realised how big the action bars actually were of a topic, and how long it would actually take to discuss them. And another one I'm not kind of looking forward to is talking about unit frames, and grid, and voodoo, or verdoo, whatever it's called, because that discussion is going to take some discussing, but um, other than that, uh, all the other stuff like the chat boxes and, you know, tool tips, that's not going to take a lot of explaining to do. And then we can go on to talking about how to configure them up and then getting into the really fun stuff. So it's worth waiting. So you better not go anywhere, okay? So I'm going to try and reduce some of this echoing because this room is really bare that I'm in. But uh, for the rest of this video, I'll take you to past Mayron as he talks in the better environment that I had set up back at my home. So yes, this episode is all going to be about add-ons. I bet you didn't see that one coming, did you? So we have to carry out some sort of research, of course. And um, in the last episode was the main introduction to the series, and we identified the key aspects of a UI, such as different add-on categories, and we're going to be expanding upon that in this episode. Then we're eventually going to download and install them, which I'm going to briefly mention because it is something relatively easy to do. And then we're going to start configurating them and going through the whole setup process. And then begins the fun bits. What I failed to mention in the last episode is that there are add-on packs out there or entire UI suits that a person can download and install which comes built with many add-ons that cover all of these categories and these add-ons have a default pre-built setup that comes together to make the UI, you know, spectacular. The most popular add-on suit is Elf UI, but there are many more such as Tuck UI that basically Elf UI has built up upon the foundations of Tuck UI. LUI is another very popular one, but the main difference is that LUI is much more lightweight because it has very simple textures and skinning techniques. LUI, however, is extremely graphical, which is why it stands out from the rest, They're similar to my UI in a certain way. Mayron UI is similar to LUI in some respects, except many of the add-ons used in the UI pack have not been specifically programmed by me for the UI suit. It has a core add-on, you know, with Mayron UI core, and it controls many of the key features and graphical artwork, but, for example, the unit frames and caspars are two separate add-ons that I've basically just used, like uh, quartz and shadowed unit frames, which is the ones I use. They're all created by other authors, but the minimap is the only real exception which I did make. The good thing about this is that you can switch around add-ons really easily by copying and pasting, you know, in the interface add-ons folder, and swapping add-ons for another add-on if you choose you don't want that add-on such as uh, shadowed unit frames, you decide you want Pitbull, for example. That is very possible to do with my UI. However, I think um, with Elf UI you can actually disable unit frames and things like that, but if you wanted to really customise it, and I mean really customise it by changing the looks of Elf UI, then you're going to find this a challenge, and you might as well just custom build your own UI. Which is what I want to be discussing in this series, we're not going to be focusing on UI suits at all, just to make that clear before we actually start doing anything. By making a custom built UI by yourself you have no restrictions upon what the UI should look like. A lot of the time unless you are an expert in Lua programming, you will be restricted by what settings are provided by that add-on that you choose to use. But the aesthetics and the placement of elements will be entirely up to you. UI suits are much more limited because you may be able to customise the look slightly through you know, different colour schemes but the actual graphics are embedded into the core of the add-on and are far too difficult to alter majority of the time. With the techniques I'm going to show you in this series, however, we will be able to fully customise the looks of a UI down to the very last pixel, which makes the possibilities limitless. 
So, if you recall from last episode, we listed the 10 unique add-on categories, and now we are going to discuss the add-ons that should be used for each one, starting with action bars. However, I did fail to mention that there is an 11th category, which is the nameplates, which we'll briefly discuss. But to be honest, the reason I think I missed it out was because it's not as important as other categories. For example, I missed out the um, inventory as well. I didn't think inventory was a very important topic which physically decreases the performance and the layout of the UI. Please note, however, before we start, that I'll only be mentioning add-ons that are fully supported with the current expansion and patch, which is currently 5.4.2. So, action bars. We talked a little about action bars mods in the last episode, so we won't be discussing them for too long, but it is worth mentioning about each major action bar add-on out there. Bartender, which is the one that I'm going to be calling Mayron Recommended, and I'll be doing that through many of the add-ons that I strongly recommend. Unlike some lightweight action bar mods that actually just change the Blizzard's action bars through their structure a little bit and tweaking, this mod is a full replacement to Blizzard action bars and has the widest range of features out of any action bar add-on. It comes with 10 action bars that can be enabled, disabled or hidden. It supports a stance, pet, bag, and XP and reputation bar, as well as a micro menu that Blizzard uses for its shortcut buttons to various windows. All of these bars are very different from how Blizzard bars work. They can be manually moved around by the user when unlocked and can be locked into place once finished. You can also gain better position by using the nudge, you know, so you can nudge an action bar one pixel to the left, right, up or down, or you can actually decide specifically what you want with the Y and X offset. All bars have been disconnected from the Blizzard artwork, which previously would have been referred to as being anchored to the art frame itself. However, you can enable the artwork if you did like the Blizzard artwork itself and just want the features that come with Bartender. And it also has a very nice feature of allowing you to enable their special Blizzard modification artwork, which has room for you to be able to put another action bar in the space where the bags bar and um, the micro menu used to reside in the Blizzard artwork. I personally think that having bags displayed is just stupid because you can just press the B button, you know, by default to show up the bags. Or um, you can have an add-on which just tells you how much room you have left. I don't think having that visual appearance of the bags is very important at all. Like most action bar mods we're going to be discussing, you can modify the action bar's scale, size and the number of buttons on each bar and their visibility. You can have them always hidden or show during certain circumstances such as hide when you're in a vehicle for example or in your combat or out of combat. So when you go in combat you can have it show or hide and vice versa. These screenshots will be shown on the video so you can have a look for yourself before deciding that you wish to progress with this add-on. You can create custom conditions but this requires some extra knowledge and it is strictly an advanced feature. Okay, so last major feature that we're going to be discussing is state configuration. This lets you show different action bars depending on which modifier key you have held down, but there are other minor features such as deciding whether or not a button's frame should be shown if there is no ability being placed on that button. This is called the show grid feature, and I personally think that having this shown is much better and it is much more user friendly so you know where action bar buttons actually reside and they don't just look completely invisible to you. The last thing worth mentioning is that you can actually hide hotkey and macro text on the buttons, so it just frees up the space and it looks better overall. But then you'd actually have to remember that it is a macro and um, which hotkey is actually assigned to that button. And then of course you can actually lock the buttons so you cannot accidentally drag them along. This can be really helpful for people who are referred to as clickers who actually try and use their mouse to click on buttons, which is a really bad idea and you shouldn't be doing it. And a special option is called toggle actions on key press instead of release, which means abilities are used as soon as you press the key down rather than activating when you take your finger away from the key. This can improve player performance during raid encounters as reaction times are increased and even if it is not increased by much at all, over a 10 minute boss fight for example, the difference in damage numbers output does accumulate and is a noticeable difference. But for casual players that are non-hardcore raiders, this does not really matter too much. There are more options but I will not go into them as I have spent as far too long discussing Bartender. We'll just quickly mention some of the other action bar mods out there. BAB Bars is a brand new approach to how action bars actually work and described by the author, he or she is not wrong. 
I imagine that BAB stands for bendable because it looks like from the pictures and from myself testing the add-on because you can actually assign anchor points to bars similar to how Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop's pen tool works you can assign as many anchor points as you want and then you can bend the path of the action bar so that it's not just a straight horizontal or vertical line you can add as many anchor points as you want this can create some really interesting shapes this removes the limitations of only being able to have straight lines so you can have some really interesting designs for your UI. It even provides an option to dynamically modify the square shape of buttons to be able to fit into any path that you like. If you had action bars in a tight circle shape then you do not want to have square buttons for example so then you can mold them into a really cool shape to fit that circle flow. This project is in alpha however so there is still room for development so unfortunately I did encounter some problems which I think need fine tuning. The first major problem is that, for example I like to have my UI pack a file size as low as possible because it makes it look more attractive. If you have it on WoW interface for example and you have a UI pack which is available for download for other people then they sometimes look at the amount of megabytes that make up the UI pack. However while this BAB add-on, the folder is only 279 kilobytes large you are required to have a texture pack in order for it to work which is an incredible 29 megabytes which is a stupidly large number but it does make sense because there are textures and textures are the things that make the most amount of memory which is why LUI is so high in megabytes compared to LVUI and the same rules apply with my UI but not to that extent it's still you know 29 megabytes is a lot this should not cause problems with performance however let's make that clear but people can be put off from downloading it the second major feature I love about this is that there seems to be no limitation on the amount of bars you can add. It was absolutely crazy. Normally add-ons only let you have a maximum of 10 bars but this I kept on adding more and more until I got to 16 and stopped. Why on earth you'd want more than 10 I don't understand but they've managed to crack the code in order to allow you to have as much as you want. I thought this was a limitation by Blizzard and this sort of thing could not be changed but apparently I was wrong. I noticed that in editor mode I did encounter many FPS spikes as though the add-on was struggling to process the amount of data involved. Also the bars were hard to move around by default because you need to drag the background of the bars. But the buttons by default are far too big and they're in the way and it caused it really hard to move the action bar around. So I actually had to decrease the button size in order to gain access to my mouse from clicking on the background to drag it which was sort of annoying. It also has very limited settings as what appears to me is that you can only alter the button size and padding. It does however support a very popular add-on called Mask which is a skinning add-on to alter the appearance only of button icons. This is a really nice feature to include because being able to stylize your action bar the icons is important for keeping the UI style consistent but if you have the option enabled for dynamically modifying the button shapes away from their square shape the skinning controlled by mask tends to decrease in quality as parts of the blizzard art start showing up underneath and it causes some distortion which is sort of strange but anyway moving on there's another very lightweight add-on which i absolutely love it's called b bars and it is the most lightweight action bar add-on which i'm going to mention it has some very good settings and it is easy to set up however it does not have the snappy effects where bars snap themselves together if moved too closely together which is something I like. Rather than having a configuration menu you have to use their special shortcuts it provides such as for example you can hold down the shift key and by using the mouse wheel you can alter the scale of the bar you are currently hovering your mouse cursor over with. You can also hold down the alt key and use the mouse wheel to change the padding and if you just use the mouse key on its own then it also just changes the number of columns that makes up the bar and you know the way would be vertical and, and the lower setting would be horizontal it claims to be supported with the mask add-on to skin it but unfortunately I could not get this to work the very simplistic one pixel border style it has been skinned with by default looks very nice and it's much neater and tidier than the blizzard style also a nice feature to include which bartender does not have is that you can actually bind more than the typical two key binds to each button on the action bar. So if you really wanted to, you can have numbers 1 to 10 on the keyboard assigned to one button. Bartender only lets you have two bindings per key. Also, the profiles seemed very hard to set up for me as it only has the option of use profile button and did not allow me to create another profile. I could not find many information on how to do this, not even on the download page. 
So Domino's is a very highly popular action bar add-on which we discussed in episode 1. It only allows you to have 10 bars like Bartender, and there are less options than Bartender, but it covers all of the ones you need and supports Mask as well. The profiles are slightly odd, as it does not use the typical WoW Ace add-on profiles that you usually expect in an add-on. Because we have already discussed this, I'll move straight on to Geist, which is, which I think is how you pronounce it. It is a very small but very useful add-on. It does not work the same way as other action bar add-ons, as I have previously mentioned, but rather that provides a keybind. And when you press that keybind, it shows a special action bar of 25 buttons and it disappears when you let go of that keybind. This provides you with 25 potential shortcuts to abilities, macros, mounts, and anything that else that you'd like to include on it. When you first install it, you will be lost as you don't know how it works. There's no icon on the minimap or anything like that. But on the download page, it tells you very clearly that it adds a very special key binding option in the Blizzard key binding menu. This is genuinely at the very bottom, which is where all the other add-ons have their key binds. Sometimes add-ons like to provide special key bindings which they store there. And that's how you sign your special keybind. Opie is another really cool add-on. I absolutely love this add-on. It has a ton of options and some really cool animation effects. It lets you have shortcuts to abilities, but rather than having a 25 button action bar that shows up, you can have as many of these rings as you want. And these come as pre-built rings that you can alter their icons on that ring, but also you can have as many customizable rings as you want. The animations are really awesome, and I definitely recommend it. The only thing that's worth pointing out is that because it does not come with an official action bar, it means that you cannot drag abilities onto the ring, you actually have to assign the actions to the ring in the settings by double clicking from a large list of all your mounts, professions and abilities. With these action bars you get some plugins such as Omni CC as I call it, and another one similar to it called Cooldowns, which provides numbers on the icon itself as a countdown timer which lets you know how much time is left until the ability is off cooldown. That is something that you definitely should be getting. So that's it for the action bar category. That was a very long topic, but the other topic should be a lot easier to explain. Well, that wraps it up for episode 2, and remember to subscribe if you want to see more episodes in future, and I promise to release them quicker than you had to wait for episode 2 to come out. This has been Mayron, and bye for now.